Hare Krishna, welcome everyone to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Thank you very much for joining today. Today we are having our session on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrata in the mid-morning and we are very, very fortunate to have His Grace Frank Govinda Prabhu with us. Uh, we will be discussing from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrata, Chapter 24, Verse Number 106 onwards. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for your valuable association. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you. Hare Krishna. Mataji, Prabhuji didn't join it, I think. He just gave him number he was asking. Oh, is it? Okay, I just saw a new number, so I thought it was him. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Stop recording and then start it. Yes. Welcome to Bhakti Sangajapa conference call. Today we have His Grace Pran Grovind Prabhu. Uh, we'll be talking on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrata, Madhya Leela, Chapter 24, Verse 106 onwards. Prabhuji, you can now take over the call. Thank you very much for your value association. Thank you. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Daita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda So we are serving Sri Chaitanya Chaitamita Madhulila Chapter 24 and as Mataji advised, text 106. Sloko Bekha Lagi E Korilu Abhas Ebe Kori Sloke Mula Ortho Prakash. Sloko Bekha Lagi. I have given all this explanation just to indicate the purpose of verse. Allow me to explain the real purpose of the verse. That means there is a big changes now. Um, until last verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave abhas of the original verse, Atma Ramas Chamunayo. And if we recall that, that uh, Atma Ramas Chamunayo, that a uh, few highlighted point was there. The original verse is from Bhagavatam that Sanatana Goswami Pad was requesting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give elaborate explanation what he had a conversation with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya before. Why it was phenomenon? Because that verse made the most hard-hearted person existed in this planet at that moment was Sarvam Bhattacharya. In his own explanation, he says, he was so famous that he used to teach the sannasis, even though he was a householder, because of his brilliance, impersonal conception, misdirection, confusion, wrong contemplation, all things was there in that impersonal conception. And he used to teach that. So his heart was filled with this. Karkash, the word he used, karkash. Like a, um, you know, the sound that uh, bothers sometime to everybody, like a, when a steel metal rubbing each other or mm, I'm thinking like maybe tire punctured and then, then it's going in high speed and rubbing the, 
maybe more than that. Karkosh is like a very annoying, extremely annoying sound. He says his heart was like this. But because Mahaprabhu delivered him, just by explaining his verse, Sanatan Goswami Pad develop a deep attachment with the impetus. What is in that verse that attracted Sarvam Bhattacharya that I hope I'm not missing? We should take advantage of that too, that view. Because the result will be that if we can get out our misconception, the two coverings of pure bhakti, then we will find a, a stage where inner current means heart's original constitutional function to serve the Lord. An external current means to go away from the constitutional position to external diversion like sense enjoyment, uh, speculation, concoction. These are not soul's original function. These are all concocted and given to the soul through material energy, through the mind uh, directing constantly. So these two opposite current is flowing to the devotees who join Hare Krishna movement. Very rarely you will see that somebody got out of it. If somebody got out of it due to the mercy of Prabhupada, Krishna, and fully engaged in devotional service, they are liberated. And not only liberated, liberated is not our goal, but it's the first installment where the pure devotional service began. So what blocking us is that misconception, discovering. And today we are on 106, and I was just reading today that, uh, oh, here it is, 102. Sakam bhakti agga jani dayalu bhagavan sacharam diya kore ichcharo pidan. When the merciful Lord Krishna understands a devotee's foolish desire for material prosperity, he gratefully gives him the shelter of his lotus feet. In this way, the Lord covers his undesirable ambition. Means, if we try to get, give up all our material desire, it will be a wrong conclusion. This is what impersonalism does. Now, Mahaprabhu is giving a very secret here. He said that if we can actually beg, I don't know if you know what is the beggar's mood or mentality. A genuine beggar, not American beggar, that, because sometime in American beggar, they have a particular demand. But I saw in India some beggars, they are so desperate just for some food and little uh, shelter that they will do anything uh, but with the begging capacity and they will get eventually. The be if we can become serious spiritual beggar, then we will see that uh, favor is, will be given to us. So here, Mahaprabhu explaining that pure bhakti, love of Godhead, it's within us, but it is covered. So Rupa Goswami Pad gave this explanation um, in Nectar of uh, Devotion, Srila Prabhupada called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, where the verse is given, Anna Vila Sita Sinnam Gena Karmadi Anabritam Anukilena Krishna Anusilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Where this Uttam Bhakti or pure Bhakti is the pure love. Pure love everybody is looking for. What is the definition? This is the definition. This is in, uh, I believe, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, yes, 1.1.11. The cultivation of activities means loving Krishna doesn't mean sitting ideal, doing nothing. 
No, you have to act. There has to be activity. Activity through your body, through your mind, and through your body means senses, and through your uh, realization, expressing what you reflecting within your heart. Uh, this is called bak. Kayo mano bakko. The bakko means this. That uh, why? Because it reinforces our emotion. When we express our reflection, it reinforces our emotion. What we really believe about Krishna, if we don't talk about it, it will not reinforce. That's why it dries up. Those devotees, those who are like isolated, they just chant and then eventually they also become a little dried. There is no real nectar flows within the heart. We think sense enjoyment is the happiness that we are trying to get through the senses from outside. But the spiritual happiness is within, inside. But there has to be reflection. So when you express your realization reflection, then it reinforces our emotional feeling where <clears throat> we will be nourished. Ladini Karai Krishna Sukha Sadan Ladini Dara Kare Bhakti Raposan. Krishna is eternally happy. Why? Because Ladini Shakti is always serving within. And through that Ladini potency also make all the devotees happy within their heart in that loving relation. So here, cultivation of activity that are meant exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. In other words, we can say, the uninterrupted flow of devotional service to Sri Krishna. And those are performed through all endeavors of our body, mind, and speech. And through the expression of various spiritual sentiments, Just like uh, we do every day, Guru Puja in our temple, uh, every day Ishkan temple, we do Guru Puja or the Diti Puja. Now, sometimes I also do. But when, it, when we do the Guru Puja, other can see our physical endeavor. I'm doing chamara or offering some flower or lamp or incense. They can notice, okay, he's going to whatever the suggestion given by the acharyas, you go four times around the waist, you know, seven times around the body. Okay. <laughs> Those are external. These are necessary also. But the essential is not those. Essential is what that person has a feeling, intention, attitude that I cannot see from outside. That is very important. Why? Because that is what actually promotes or, or reconnects our uh, relationship with Krishna or with Prabhupada. And it, it draws that uh, spiritual happiness. So that we cannot see from outside. Unless, because spiritual happiness is like when you experience spiritual happiness, only you know. Nobody else knows. Even you explain them, it is not possible unless they are experiencing. It is not like a something material. Of course, some example can be given, like uh, eating ice cream, as I mentioned before. The tongue does not have a flavor of the vanilla or whatever, uh, pistachio nut. And the ice cream does not have the tongue to explain, and the tongue doesn't have a flavor to explain. So none of them can explain. But when they come together, ice cream and the tongue, then the experience is relished. So some example is given like that. Like when we engage our physical body or speaking or thinking, this external and our inner connection is connecting to that with the Lord, to please Him. Then the experience is relished. If somebody is just chanting and not connecting within, 
The Lord is within the heart. In Bhagavad Gita, so many places, the Lord revealed that. Sarvasya chaham ridi samni vishta. Isara sarva bhutanam riddesha arjuna tishtati. These are the verses. 15, 15, 18. See, these are explanation of Krishna. is claiming that I am in your heart. So when the connection is established with our endeavor, intention, then like a ice cream and the tongue. When the, they come in contact, similarly, when our intention and connects with our endeavor, then the relishment is uh, realized or experienced. So that's why Rupa Goswami gives this verse, which is devoid of all desire other than aspiration to bring happiness to Krishna. Every endeavor we do, we should think, how it is pleasing Krishna? I'm talking right now. How it is pleasing Krishna? What Krishna himself says, that anybody glorify these teachings that depicted in Bhagavatam or Chaitanya Charitamrita and Prabhupada also, all the Acharyas are also they are agreeing with the same thing. Tabakathamritam tattajivanam When they talk about this uh, glory, quality, uh, personality of Krishna and the great Acharya, then it gives many results. The main thing is it destroys our inauspiciousness. Inauspicious means that causes pain, experiencing pain. In that sense, it is on inauspicious. <laughs> and, auspi- and it also bestows good fortune. Good fortune doesn't mean money. Good fortune doesn't mean I become famous. No, no. That is mundane. Good fortune means humility. Humility develops. Humility develops. Humble attitude develops. Grateful attitude develops. These are called good fortune for devotees. Attraction to hear about Krishna is developing. I'm getting more attraction. I, I feel happy to hear more. I feel happy to chant. These are the good fortune. If some devotee may have a sickness, but if he has the attraction for hearing Krishna, that means he has a good fortune. Maybe the health-wise he may be suffering externally. He's still good fortunate. But if somebody has a, some devotee has a big luxury, but he gave up chanting, that is not a good fortune, a misfortune. If something causing us to come to our constitutional connection, it is a misfortune. Of course, constitutional connection will come only by cognitional connection. So devotional practice Always is a cognitional connection and then we'll act on a constitutional platform. Because our sarup is servant of Krishna. Jivir sarup hai, our original position. And then go through this uh, process, then someone will be established. And if we, if we break down the Rupa Goswami path, this explanation that Mahaprabhu is going to now give the next, I mean, this is the ocean of nectar. Next uh, slokos, they are going to talk about uh, starting that covering. What is covering the pure bhakti? That uh, Mahaprabhu says, Mula Artha, the real purpose of the verse, he will explain. That Krishna's quality is so contagious. Contagious, not in a bad sense, because that's the only English word I know. Uh, infection, contagion. But it's a good sense that when we are attracted by the Krishna's madhuri, sweetness of uh, good quality, like Krishna is eminently lovable. Wow. If you live with somebody for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, and then I behave so badly that person leaves or my children, or my anything, any, or, or even a society, of, you know, in Alacha we have a 
thousand devotee community here. It's not that important how many rounds I chant, but my relationship with how I behave, how I respect is very important. I may be chanting 64 rounds, but does it matter if I not properly respect and express my loving sentiment to see a devotee uh, or welcoming them in the temple? It is necessary. Prabhupada was first class emblem of that. We should always remind devotees about Krishna through our behavior, through our service, attitude. That is the best way to serve Vaishnavas, devotees. Through our conversation, through our uh, devotional attitude. If they, if they remember Krishna, if something reminds them of Krishna, this is best. So here, back to this, that Mahaprabhu now, he's saying that he's going to give the real purpose of the bus. So what is the real purpose? The real purpose is here, as we go, that pure love or bhakti is covered. So we have to uncover. This is anabritam. Anabritam means, abritam means cover. Anabritam means uncover. What are you going to uncover? What are you going to uncover? Unlimited things, at least main are three. One, desire are bad. We cannot control the desire. It will go pass by like a movie in front of our mind. But with intelligence, we can catch what we, we can choose what we want to contemplate. We should not be just thinking, oh, I don't want this, I don't like this, I don't like this. Our focus should not be there. Our focus is what we can use, utilize. Then whatever we cannot utilize, automatically will be deducted, will be gone, passed by. So there's a fine art in that. And gratitude will draw attraction of the mercy of Krishna from the heart of pure devotee, amongst us. You know, it's easy to glorify great soul who left this world. But what about the great soul who are present amongst us? Well, sometimes mind will say, but uh, how, how do I know he's a great soul? Why well, never serve that devotee? You cannot know another great soul without serving if we develop a service attitude, it is eternal. It is who we are made of. It is such a lovable uh, profession, service attitude. Then, through service attitude, actually, those great souls can reveal to you who they are. Just like one big sannasi, he was chanting very deeply, very close by. And he has these thousands of Disciples that uh, they are all doing this big festival. So I came and I was sitting next to him and we chanted for two hours. I noticed he didn't even look at anything. He just staring at his DD and just chanting. He didn't even know I was there. So after two hours, he asked me, hey, Pran Govind, what are you doing here? I said, Maharaj, you invited me all the way from America. I came here and I want to know why, how, what are you thinking when you are chanting? I want to develop that greed that you have. Why you want to know my secret? I said, Maharaj, that's how I can only advance. So he told me two things in two days. One thing he says, he thinks seriously that I, this could be my last day. This could be my last moment. What can I do? It will please Krishna. How sincerely can I serve this holy name? And he becomes so absorbed to hear the sound. Because in absolute platform, he was explaining that how Prabhupada said there is no difference between the beautiful form of Lord and the holy name and the pastimes and the quality. Because they are all on the same platform. Suddha Sattva. So if I can, only thing I can do that endeavor to hear it and automatically take you to a different level. It could be my last moment. I better take it seriously. 
and it works. You have a new experience. You really fall in love with the Holy Name. And these are the deep, real purpose of the chanting. And of course, he says another thing. I, I cannot say it because if someday if he hear this lecture, oh, he told this. He told me this is like a very confidential relationship with the Lord. So this is very nice. Uh, like Prabhupada also has so many confidential. Sometimes he expressed, sometimes he could not. He said he tried to control his emotional feeling. So when we express our reflection, it reinforces our emotion. And we need. We need more Krishna experience than Krishna explanation. Krishna explanation is ne- needed, necessary, good. But we need Krishna experience more than Krishna explanation. Just like we had a Janmashtami celebration. It was wonderful. And we had a seminar uh, glorifying Krishna. But meditating on that itself was like satisfy you. You don't need even eating, sleeping, mating, depending, nothing. It's such a good experience. Devotees, I hope, out of thousands, uh, at least few hundred experience, I'm sure. Uh, it's not just few of us. So we must know this covering. Let's get back to this uh, sloko. The next verse, it says, Genomarge upasak duito prakar kebol brahma upasak muksha kankiyar. Yes, I, I remember. Now this is all going to be talking about how Krishna's quality actually attracts all these devotees. How Krishna's quality. So let's go back. Then what do, uh, are we better than those Gyanomargi? Who are the Gyanomargi? Well, Sukhdev Goswami, <laughs> he was a Brahmavadi in a sense. Uh, here, uh, I think in a few pages, we'll find it. I read this long time back. Uh, there it is. The nine, Nova Jogendra in the 11th canto. There they are, the four Kumaras. Oh, the whole list is given. The who are there? So we, I cannot think I was be, I'm better than them. So what they had, maybe I had, and wh- how they removed, maybe I can remove also. Only thing is a conscious choice. I have to be willing to remove. So first I have to know or acknowledge what are those covering I have in my heart. So Rupa Goswami gives here Gena Karma Abrita. So should we not even pursue any gyan, any knowledge? Well, it is not the 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 sloka does not say that we should not pursue the knowledge. He says uncovering means as you progress bhakti. You cannot, if you are performing sincere, chanting holy name, serving the Lord, singing the, for the Lord, for the pleasure of the Lord, you honoring prasadam for the pleasure of the Lord, so that you can maintain this body to serve. If you, if you have a, that service attitude you are serving, you must be getting two reactions. You cannot stop it. It is not possible. It is not possible to touch fire and not feel the Heat. There has to be temperature, hot. If it is fire. Similarly, in Bhagavatam explains that when you Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayajita Janayati Asu Vairagyam Gyanam Chaja Ahetukam when you perform devotional service to Vasudev, Lord Vasudev Krishna, then automatically you are not endeavoring. Just like you watering the tree. Automatically tree will give you fruits and flowers. Now if you think like, oh, I have to pull the fruits out of the tree. No, you don't. And even if you try, it will not come out. It is a natural function. But what I should do, just water, make sure it is nicely fenced so that the animal doesn't destroy, means onartha doesn't destroy. Uh, make sure the sunlight is coming in, air is there, oxygen is there. As for the fruits and flowers, they will come naturally. 
as the tree grows. Similarly, when the bhakti kripa is growing in our heart, we must protect the fans. What are the unwanted things? These are the covering, Rupa Goswami Path says. And now, next, uh, at least third sloka, all will talk about this. That uh, Gyana, first let's touch the first word he gave, Gyana. What is Gyana? That the, we should not focus on the Gyana. We should focus on Bhakti. Bhakti means engaging our senses, our mind, our words, with a favorable intention, but it is exclusively for the pleasure of Krishna. We are not only eager to serve, we should be more eager what pleases Krishna, more than just pleasing Krishna. What pleases Krishna, if we focus, it will actually guide us faster. So first thing is Gyan. Okay, so then what is that bhakti going to show us that uh, we need to be watching that, uh, that covering that uh, we have? Well, let's, let's discuss that. Srila Prabhupada says, all scriptural conclusions are washed off by these tears. That means you have to have a knowledge hearing, and conclusion pasted or printed in the heart. Srila Prabhupada says in Madhulila 1.34, he says all scriptural conclusion has to be there. Then it will wash off by these tears. When you will have a, everybody wants to feel love for Krishna. But they forget that they have to be actually coming to this point that they know the conclusion of purpose of life, who am I, any question, the conclusion has to be imprinted nicely in the heart. Then, automatically, those knowledge, conclusion, will create a tears flow that it will come out. You read in Madhulila, uh, 1.34 Prabhupada writes here, all scriptural conclusions are washed off by these tears. Very nice. So now let's go back. What are those gyan that this verse is giving? That Mahaprabhu now going to uh, give the example that all these gyanis, they became devotees. They got attracted. How they got attracted? What was before they didn't get attraction? Maybe if I notice that why I'm not attracted to Krishna, to cry for him, to be always uh, in jubilation to serve him. What is that blocking? Here Rupa Goswami says, the extrinsic characteristic is now being explained. What is it? The term is called Gyano Karmadi Anabritam, means that cultivation of bhakti should be free from the covering of Gyan, Karma, and so forth. What are the Gyan? Now, there is a little technical. He did not say throw away the knowledge. Prabhupada did not say knowledge you should throw away. He said uncovering. Uncovering means you will find like a treasury box. You find something you can use, you put in your pocket, I mean in your heart. And you see, oh, this is what it is. Oh, no, I don't want This is painful. Put it aside that you, you know what it is, you don't want it. So if you categorize like this, there is three types of knowledge you have to be fully aware. What are those? Tatpadartha Gyan, Tampadartha Gyan, and Jiva Brahma Oikko Sajidja Gyan. All these examples that next 30 sloko will explain, these, these slokas will explain about the people who had Jiva Brahma Oikko Sajidja Gyan. And we have to understand and put it aside that we never need it. But if you just reject it, don't understand what it is, you may fall for it. 
So let's discuss first that one. What is that? The knowledge of the oneness of Jiva and Brahma. Here, you'll see next few sloka. If I have time, we'll go. Otherwise, that they're breaking down that, oh, Gano Margo are two types. One is Brahma Vasak, one is desiring for the liberation. Then number 108 says, Brahma Vas, Upasak are three types. There's a Sadaka, there's a Brahma Moy, and one who merged. Then talking about that without Bhakti, there is no merging. And what is that? Um, bhakti attracting what kind of people and then the verses goes one after another you know so many verses 10, 12, 15 verses but let's grasp what is that they had maybe we had we don't want it N number one knowledge of the oneness of living entity and impersonal Brahman. What is that impersonal Brahman? Is it part of Krishna? Yes. Can it exist separately from Krishna? No. Krishna exists, Krishna's existence by himself, for himself, of himself. Impersonal Brahman cannot claim by himself, for himself, of himself. So there's a big difference. There's four Brahman we must be aware of. One is Jiva Brahma, one is Mahat Brahma, this material world. Because those, those Brahma, uh, those, uh, not Brahma Vadi, those are uh, impersonalists that they want to be like entering into Brahman, but they do not have uh, loving sentiment to please the Lord. They may have done devotion because that's the only way they can get. They may be chanted, but they don't have a desire to serve Him, to please Him. They don't have this favorable. As a result, they enter into a big tree, big rock. One time devotees even said to Prabhupada on a walk that there is a big grocery, uh, no, there is a big... Um, hardware store in America called Home Depot. So I said, oh. And then the devotee says, we can buy a chainsaw. And since you are saying all these impersonalists entered into this big, big tree, we can cut down all this tree in America. Ropa said, that does not solve the problem. Because you have to converse with them, those souls, and you convince them and you have to reform them back to their natural as a servant of God. Just by cutting down the tree doesn't mean they're liberated. They live there for 500 years, 1,000 years. If they become rock on the bottom of the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, I mean, I don't know. Probably, who knows, million years they can stay there. They think this is what margin. Now ask yourself, would you really be happy just stuck inside the rock. Yes, we have that experience we call Sushupti, the existence of the conditioned soul. One is they are either sleeping, means they are not aware of spiritual life. They're dreaming, means they're fascinated, romanticizing the material enjoyment. People are. Even sometimes beginning uh, Sadhak, uh, New Fight Devotee, they, they romanticize. The facility, okay, now we have some access of Krishna, but we still want to enjoy. They romanticize how to have a beautiful house on the beach. I'm not saying anything wrong. If it is going to be pleasure for Krishna, do it. If it is not, what is the need? Why you want to reject billion dollar check, Krishna Prem, when you're searching for one dollar? That's not really intelligent choice. So, back to this that we are not interested of romanticizing. Then there is another people also, amongst practitioners. Sometimes they say, ah, family life, horrible. Ah, material world is horrible. We are not interesting. Inter we should not be interested to demonize the world, rejecting. We, are not, we should not be romanticizing or demonizing. We should be utilizing. 
Everything belongs to Krishna. This world belongs to Krishna. If we can engage, yes. If we cannot engage, then limit yourself where you can. Don't go, don't offer Krishna something you don't possess. Just like this devotee, you went in front of public. A grocery supermarket, those who are the listener, if you are not familiar, it's called public. In, America, in California, it's called bonds. Somewhere it's a different name. So one devotee went and he took his Brahman thread and he offered the whole shop. And when it reported to Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, oh, wh- wh- what shop? It's a big supermarket. So who owns it? So uh, I don't know. He said, how can you offer something that not belongs to you? So <laughs> and then Prabhupada made the point that Krishna wants not what is in this world. Krishna doesn't need anything. Neither Krishna enjoy the material matter. He's not in- interested. Is interested what you are holding tightly to your heart. Are you offering those? That's all. He's not interested million, billion or whatever. He's interested our endeavor. What we are holding in tightly in our heart. Are we offering those attachments to him for his pleasure? You may say, well, that's so dirty. I can't offer. Try to offer. Because if you can connect... Those dirty things will transform into, just like the prostitute, came in contact with Hoida Thakur, became such an advanced Mataji, that from long distance, the advanced devotee would come to touch her food dust. She became such a dedicated, such a devotional example. So this Jogomaya, Form to or, or convert to Mahamaya or Mahamaya convert to Jogomaya. What makes it? Bosudev had this girl named Jogomaya, internal potency, endowed with inconceivable potency. At some Kongsha touched, she is no more Jogomaya. She became an external potency. What made it transform? Is the attitude. Is the intention. So that's why, let's go back to this. So, the soul are eternally servant. So, merging idea, literally, is demonized. The opportunity to serve. In the Brahman existence, the soul is still endowed with the senses, spiritual senses. It doesn't have a material body, material senses is finished, but spiritual senses is there, and there is no utility. So what happens? You are still like a, like a um, good example I could think in today's Akadoshi, uh, that you are starving, uh, for seven days. Finally, you arrived at a temple. But some or other, somebody bound your leg and hand and mouth and everything with a big uh, pillar. And But in front of you is 56 preparation made, uh, offered to Krishna and prasadam, but you cannot eat. Just look. How do you feel? So it's like a torture torture. So similarly, the soul, that merging idea, it, you, you may say, well, there, there is a Brahmananda, they say Brahmananda, there is the experience. Then question come, let's ask this question. Who is experiencing? Where is the evidence? If you merge, you lose your, you lose your own existence, you want to lose your own existence, become one with the Brahman. Who is experiencing them? You don't have identity to experience. Just like in our devotional path, we are consciously aware of our experience. So the happiness, Krishna consciousness means 
aware of my happiness. Merging or deep sleep where we lost connection, we don't remember anything during deep sleep. After waking up, we recall, maybe recall, oh, it was a good sleep. But that experience is after you wake. During the sleep, you don't. So happiness in unconscious state, we are not interested. And also comparison, happiness in conscious state, devotional path, billion times more than unconscious state. There is no difference between living entity and Brahman in one sense. Another sense, there is a vast difference. When ignorance, question may come, then when my ignorance will be dissipated? becomes identical with the Swarup of Brahman. At that time, I, the living entity, has no separate existence. This kind of knowledge is called Jiva, Brahma, Vaikya, Sajidja, Gyan. The Gyan, word Gyan, which is used in this verse under discussion, refer only to this knowledge of the oneness of the living entity and Brahman. This knowledge is called Nirvishesh Gyan. Srila Prabhupada's name, it says Nirvishesha Sunnavadi. Two things he must uh, destroy when we are seeking his blessings. And he is. One is this conception. Nirvishesha Gyan is opposed to Bhakti. That's why it has to be demolished finished, burn into ashes. Other two knowledge, Tatpadartha again and Tampadartha again must be adapted. So you reject and you adapt. This both side by side has to go. When, when uh, we adapt the bhakti, path of bhakti, these two type of knowledge are most essential. Now, for an example, in the dark room, if you take the darkness out by the bucket, well, it will be difficult to make the absence of darkness. So, the intelligent choice is, you turn on the light, then darkness will dissipate. So, similarly, we have to be aware of this knowledge, the danger of this merging idea. At the same time, we should adapt and practice this other two knowledge. What is it? Tatpadartha again. What is Tatpadartha again? Let's discuss a few minutes. Knowledge of the constitutional identity of Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, is the absolute truth. Param Tattva. Who is Krishna? He is a non-dual. Param Brahma. He is the origin of all. Yet, he is without origin. This is interesting. Anadi Radhi, we chant every day. He is the cause of all causes. He is the supreme repository of all qualities of majestic and sweetness. We should meditate on Krishna is completely bereft of inferior material qualities. Even though we say universal form is Krishna's form, it has a connection because the universal form has no existence separately from him. But the universal form has a 20 defects in Nectar Devotion Prabhupada says. And Satchidananda body does not have those faults. Those faults. Krishna is Satchidananda Mai, Vigraha, embodiment of existence, cognition, and bliss. Krishna is inconceivable. Omnipotence is within him. He is the possessor of inconceivable omnipotence. He is very, he is the very identity of both Rasha and Rashika. Uh, in English will be, Rasha means he is the embodiment of condensed form of bliss. At the same time, Krishna is expert in relishing 
relishing um, the true love of uh, relationship that the god is offering true love of that friend he is very identity of both rasa and rasika that's why in other words he is actually the abode of all rasa he himself is fully adept in enjoying such rasa in the company of his devotee krishna is the swayam bhagavan he is the ultimate object this thing we should meditate every day talk to your own mind shila prabhupada suggested in teaching of lord chaitanya to talk to your own mind every day that krishna is supreme god you heard this million times still every day talk to the your mind he is the supreme controller he is ultimate object to be ascertained by the vedas and all shastra he alone is the person to be designated by the term swayam bhagavan this kind of gyan knowledge is called tatvadarta gyan and there is many example actually i don't know how the time passed so fast i always had a <laughs> battle but not in a wrong way because time is also krishna I'm not i think but look at we should be seeking desperately to acquire this knowledge because it will transform into tears when someone again realize and if you look at how much important this knowledge look at krishna himself what he does as a bottle krishna you know the baby krishna lying on the bottle uh, banyan leaf that uh, markendra rishi witness he sucks his own toes you know why because all the knowledge of this world all the knowledge of this world come from uh, krishna's tone all the knowledge of this world comes from krishna stone age and that's why krishna himself is eager to taste his own glories of knowledge sachi mata even saw one time lord chaitanya from his body how the knowledge was emanating hey krishna even told in the bhagavad gita idam genam upasita mam sa dharma agata Rupa Goswami Pad says, "Nikila Suti Mauli Ratna Mala Duti Nirajita." So many verses is there. And Tampa Darta again in a very short because of the time of the ten, oh, eleven fifty-four. Okay, very short. And Tampa Darta again means the soul's identity. What is my constitutional position? What is my constitutional relationship? We should. I I like this idea. So Chinnandan Maharaj was. pounding on this point first you think you are brahman don't think you are servant of krishna first because brahman actually he didn't say it it's probat said but he repeated probat said so that you can separate what is matter product of time and space of this world is separate from you you are constitutionally spirit soul first second you are servant of krishna third you have a relationship with the lord in a very loving way and fourth that relationship gives the highest nourishment to the lord and to you there is nothing compare or equal to that happiness so this focus only this there's so many thing to say about souls uh, identity if we focus on these two who krishna is every day and what who am i and what is our relationship then automatically this merging idea will disappear we don't need that time quality of krishna will attract and will experience this bhakti i land with this because it's 11 oh we have 4 minutes if there is any question or comments correction Hare Krishna Can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu ji. Namaskar. 
Hold on. My phone is not is not working. Can you mute your phone? Okay, I can hear better. Sorry. Hare Krishna Bhaji. Was there was there a lot of noise from my ear? No, Prabhu, your voice is completely fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Ah, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dana Pranam and Glory to Shri Prabhu. Dana Pranam, all glory to Prabhu Pad. Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji. It's a very very nice class, and I have a couple of questions, Prabhu. Uh, it's, uh, uh, also, it's uh, before class. You were telling me you just want to know about that also. Uh, in uh, soul, as uh, in uh, you were telling uh, maybe two three class before. Uh, it, it is in the when it's the uh, uh, so means we take pleasure in the in sleeping mode also. But that kind of pleasure is a uh, mode of ignorance, and that is. Uh, not really uh, actively, I mean, that uh, soul is not active in his activity. And you are telling something, Prabhu, means uh, um, uh, how we understand that activity. You were, I completely forgot, them, but uh, it's, it's really, it is in my mind. Uh, means you are telling something in uh, the sleeping mode, also he takes the uh, pleasure, but it's not his activity or something. I'm trying to understand your question. You are saying that uh, how to understand the souls experiencing in relationship with the Lord when serving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can tell that also, Prabhu, but you, it was the contents you were telling in that lecture. Means, um, in a sleeping mode also, the soul can experience, but that is not the actual his position or something you were telling, I actually forgot, yeah. You mean with the sense enjoyment? Yes, Prabhu. Uh-huh. I mean, we can give an example. You remember, I think last time I mentioned that, that uh, when... There is a parasite inside the body. It creates a hungerness. And I, Pran Govinda Das, I cannot see that. So I think uh, I'm this body and the parasites create this bodily needs. So then I go and eat. And now I feel satisfied. But in reality, you can ask any... Uh, doctor, they will probably explain you about it more <laughs> scientifically than me, that uh, actually uh, the parasites delights uh, through us uh, to fulfill their desire. But uh, I am still left hungry. But I cannot even think why, because I identify with the body. I don't even know that I'm soul. So it's kind of like a misdirected. And uh, it's very, um, let's say, a practical example. Water has a liquidity in a natural temperature. Water is made with liquidity. It flows from higher to lower. Which water? Anywhere in the creation. You go, all the water has the same quality. They always flow from higher to lower. This liquidity is always visible. Now in the freeze, uh, refrigerator, we see that uh, water turn into ice cube. If somebody don't have a knowledge about water, it will be very difficult to show them that liquidity is actually natural for the water. But if somebody has intelligent, oh, I see, yeah, it makes sense. There's actually, um, I heard 
the water always flows, but in the freezing condition, it does not. And if you take the ice cube out of the freeze and put it in a normal temperature, after some time, you will see it start melting. That is called Sadhan Bhakti. Sadhan Bhakti will eventually give us that better that actually you can remain so happy. We are not looking for actually eating, sleeping, mating, defending. We are looking for happiness, pleasure seeking. We do those things because actually Krishna creates this through, because the soul wants to experience the material nature and those are conditioned. So Krishna creates a demand and he supplies. Now, if you don't have that demand, you don't need the supply. But in order to see that no demand, you have to act on a constitutional position. In a, in a true sense, uh, Atma Ramata, there is Atma Nandi, that uh, when you realize that you are soul in your constitutional position, you actually discard all material needs. And nothing. That's why the sages, even old age, sages in the cave, they would live there for years without eating, sleeping, mating, or depending or anything. It's not that there was no snake or tiger or everything was there. Food could be possible. They could find some food, but they could meditate for hundreds of years without eating anything. On what level? Soul level. In soul level, to practically say that actually they could just be self-satisfied. But we are looking for Sevananda, not just Brahmananda. Sevananda is higher than that. If Prabhupada translate on that verse, Brahmananda Bhavide. So, Cheta Prarada Gunikrita, Itam Bhakti Sukham Bode, Paramanda Tulamoki. If you multiply 1000 trillion times, Prabhupada says, it's still not equal. How much happiness in the Brajabhasi they get within. That's why everything is inconceivable in that realm. Because like Nanda Maharaj is so happy, the son is born, he wants to give gifts. And he told his treasurer, bring some gold coin. Now in Vrindavan, who makes gold coin? Well, we don't know. But he was giving so much gold coin. Why? Because he's so happy. He wants to express that, his feeling. So when it reflects, you know, expression, <clears throat> the reflex, uh, when uh, he found uh, it was reinforcing his emotion, and he was more in love with the Lord, uh, with his baby, Krishna. Uh, so that time he gave so much gold. How much gold? He says there is a thousands and thousands of brahmanas from somewhere appeared. And they came with a bullock cart. Uh, because the amount of gold gave that they could not carry. So Nanda Baba gave them a bullock cart to carry. And thousands of bullock cart. Where this gold coin come? These are all secondary. But the happiness is the key. Material world... We, we think we need the food. No, we don't really need the food at soul level. But because I have uh, this body uh, I uh, uh, have taken by misidentification, now I cannot go back to my soul level unless I engage and purify this existence. There's no other way. So we see the importance of the body, then we give importance of the body. Bodily needs what? Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Okay, if body needs it, when body needs it, you give. And uh, But obsession to the bodily need is sinful. This is what actually um, misdirect from devotional path. People are so obsessed in this material world for their bodily needs. This is unnecessary. And, and what is the danger of it? Danger of it, they will not take birth as a human. <coughs> they will go down, gliding down, down, down to the grass, rocks, dust. That's why the world is filled 
These are also soul. These grass, plants, a tiny, tiny look at. Even I'm looking right now through my window. This is, we talk about 7 billion people, human beings. There's a 7 billion grasses are here on this field. Where this come from? Because they degraded down to this level. So these are, that's why sense enjoyment is condemned in a sense. So what do we do? We all know, you know, that we purify our bodily demand for the pleasure of Krishna. I give you a gross example. Generally, I don't say it. One time Prabhupada, he was uh, climbing up on the Lotus building. Um, and uh, because recently one devotee says, okay, eating can be purified. Sleeping, okay, we can discipline. But what about mating? Now you taking, you're going to take sannas, but everybody has not, you know, they still have a strong inclination for enjoyment. And uh, Prabhupada said also that uh, without producing child, you can, uh, should not meet, uh, because that's what that seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita says, Dharma Viridha Kamesh. <coughs> How to understand? Well, Prabhupada is very compassionate. Prabhupada understand that concept. He was so practical. So while he was going up on the lotus building, halfway, if you go to Mayapur, you will see halfway there is a uh, flat step where uh, you could just stand. No more stairs there. And then again stairs starts. So Prabhupada would stand there and he turned back and he saw a devotee very far distant. Nobody had any clue about it. He says, you, why you go to prostitute at night? Now, I was thinking like, in Mayapur, where is the prostitute? I never saw. I lived there for 12 years. I never even heard or saw. But Prabhupada knew. And the devotee was frightened because I spoke to him later. He was so frightened. He was like shocked that Prabhupada knew. And he came up on the stairs. And there was a lot of sannasis. And anyway, they allow him to come. And he fell at the feet of Prabhupada. He said, I'm so sorry, Prabhupada. He said, but why? Why you go to prostitute? He said, because you told me not to meet with my wife without uh, procreation of a child. Prabhupada says, he thought a few moments. He was quiet. He says, it's all right. If you cannot control, you can meet your wife. Don't go to prostitute. And I pray, he was so merciful. I pray, Jai Bhattaka Maharaj knows this story very well, because he was there. Um, and he said, I pray that uh, eventually you come out of this obsession of bodily need. So we can pray. Whoever cannot discipline or control, they can pray. Eating, meat, eating sleeping, mating. And defending, defending, of course, <laughs> uh, we should not be overprotective, you know, like, okay, you drive a car, you buy insurance, but you don't have to be like, worry about it. And I'm sure nobody really spent them. So this way we reconcile everything. If I have a disease within me, I must pay attention how to cure it. But if I fall in love with the disease, then it's difficult to cure because I don't want to take the medicine to cure it. But first thing first, we have to have an idea first. Idea is that the spiritual happiness is higher. Trillion, Prabhupada write trillion. No, he write thousand trillion times. I don't know what that number is. You know, even in computer, I could not, I mean, calculator, I could not put it. But it's in the seventh canto. You can see that verse of Rupa Goswami Pad in the Parapur Prabhupada put it. And uh, 1000 trillion times. Wow. So the idea is there, okay, idea is there is so much happiness, I want to go. So idea has to be there. Then we can pray and then pursue further in progress. Eventually, we all will come to a point, forget it, I don't need it. Voluntarily, you will withdraw to divert anything else. But our focus should not be too much just to get out of sense and German. Our focus should be towards Developing attachment, like a kind of addicted to think of Krishna, to chant, 
to remember the slokas or something related connecting to Krishna. More we are attached to Krishna, there will be a separation feeling naturally arise. Separation feeling will never come unless the attachment is there. It's natural. That attachment will create a separation feeling from the Lord. That separation feeling will detach us from our sense and gem and spirit. We should not do artificial otherwise. I mean, we can, we can, you know, someone can try, but it will take longer time. I don't know if that answers your question. Mm, yes, Prabhu, it's very, very practical. Your answer is, yeah, also I remember you were telling me that the unconsciousness after we uh, go and merge in the Mahavishnu's time in unco- long time will be remain in unconsciousness and that happiness. That is not our actual position. You were telling that and then activity to Krishna. And I also probably very nicely you explain uh, what is things to be. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. I have another question, but if other devotees have any question, they can go to Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Nandavar Pranam. Um, Nandavar Pranam. Um, sorry, I joined a little late into the class, but uh, I was just a little curious. I was going through the verses, and I'm not sure if you already explained the difference between the uh, two kinds of uh, liberation being mentioned in the verses. Um, and if you've already explained, I can go back and listen. Or if you think you can uh, explain it now, I would be happy to hear from you, Prabhu. Liberation? Yeah, the verses explain of two kinds of liberation. Uh, one is to be, uh, uh, one is to worship the impersonal Brahman, and the other one is to. Uh, aspire for liberation. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I was not yes. sure what yes. is the difference between the two. So let's let's uh, make a key point for you. Always think to turn to Krishna, not to get something, but to be with someone. If we can think like this then we can see the uselessness of the liberation idea. In other words, let's phrase it. Turn to God not to get something, but to be with someone. So now how this is related to this liberation idea? Question will rise. If one can only prove the eternal difference between God and the living entity, how can one accept the oneness? The another point also, there can be. I mean, there is so many points. If there is oneness, do we have to accept a state of merging with Ishara? Because liberation means, is all, first question is liberation means you know the word liberation of Shakti means you are experiencing bandhan, bound. So you don't want to be any more bound, or you don't want to be any more captured position, or you don't want to be any more uh, struggling. You know, liberation, the ideal liberation, um, I don't know the dictionary meaning, but from the Sanskrit meaning, mukti. Mumuksu means those who are endeavoring. Mukti means that you are out of uh, um, any more entanglement. You are now free. So we have to understand what is free means completely. That I want liberation, Mukti. But what is free means? And what we are free from what? And how this freeness, or what bond, what made us, uh, originally in bondage that we are looking for liberation. So there's the three stages. What caused us that uh, we are looking for liberation? Well, first, if somebody don't even know they are bondage, they are fine. You know, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you explain, well, I hope not. Uh, but I have a 
friend uh, who is the superintendent of prison here in Stark. And uh, so when I was in a, my business uh, that I gave to my son now, that uh, I remember she came and I asked her, I said, so you are superintendent of the prison. So we talked about three hours about prison. I just wanted to know all these things. And it's really scary. And she told me there's a 20% of the people when they live there for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, they become inmate and they don't like outside world. Now, if you think that if, if uh, the purpose of the prison for correction, what happened to the inmates who wants to live there, don't want to get out? The correction is lost. The idea of prison to go there to be corrected and come back as a normal again. I did something wrong, you know, I killed somebody or something. Okay, I go there, then I, uh, some correction has taken in my heart, in my understanding, and then I come out. But if the in, if an inmate fall in love with the prison, how they will get out? Majority people in this world, they like this world. They are so long in this material world, they don't even know what spiritual happiness is. So when you talk about liberation, sometimes even it's a good idea. Like British time, I read the history, because my father was a freedom fighter also with Mahatma Gandhi's group. So he told us so many stories when I was a little kid. And that the, how, how, how the Mukti Sangha, you know, like they had a group of Mukti Bahini, all kinds of groups in Bengal. And uh, at that time, of course, I didn't understand. Now I look at that. What they are trying to get out of British for what? That question, when you ask all these questions, and nobody even knows the answer, neither they even promoted that. It's just uh, some misconception so I can control the country instead of that, those guys. So when people don't have a clear conception what liberation is, why they should be looking for liberation, then it's just an idea. It's not really conceptualized, neither is it really uh, imprinted uh, that it's hurting you. You know, most of the people, even in the class, in the temple other day, nice devotee gave class. He said, the world is suffering. And everybody, even Kormis, they understand. And I asked him, I said, actually material people, they don't understand the suffering. They think suffering means they, they, if they have more money, then suffering will be gone. But that's not the suffering we're talking. When the Hare Krishna people preaches, we're not talking about those suffering. The people don't have enough money or they are sick or they, yeah, those are there. But when we talk about suffering, we're talking about the bondage, the karmic reaction and action that they are going to be forced to experience. They cannot cut out of this bond of three modes of material nature. They die, they are forced to take birth. People don't have any clue that they are forced to take birth. They are forced to die. So when materially, when the people think of suffering, they think of, oh, I'm just old lady, old man. Oh, my car broke down. I don't have a way to go around. They think the suffering is those. Yes, those are also suffering. I'm not denying it. But when we talk Krishna consciousness view, we're talking about solution forever. There was an Indian professor came to Prabhupada in Mexico. She said, Maharaj, you are only promoting, chanting, and you engaging. What about all this problem of the world? You know, old people suffering. There's so many sick people, so many, and, you know, need a hospital and this, that. So Prabhupada gave an answer. Now, those who are audience online, you have to know what Prabhupada mentioned about boil. If you are, if you are not familiar with the boil, it will be difficult. But... I know boil because in Mayapur I saw the body had. I never had, but the body had. In the boil, if you get a boil, if you blow air like this, then they it makes them feel good. And uh, but uh, 
the devotee who has a boil and the other person blowing air and he feel how do you feel now oh it feels good good but actually it is not good it is dangerous why because every time you blow air the white blood corpuscles who are supposed to be fighting against the disease get defeated and it turn into pus so inside is actually disease is increasing but outside your sensation oh i feel good so proper said we are not that kind of reliever liberator we are doctor take out the boil out of the body once for all why it will hurt to cut the skin yes it will hurt but we are going to cure forever so liberation means Prabhupada always promote this. Not atanti dukkha nibriti. Just to uh, navigate the suffering. That is also there. But we, our focus is not there. What is it? Muktir hitta annatha rupam sorupeno parvastiti. That so long we cannot bring the soul to act in his eternal constitutional function, he is still bondage. he can be liberated from this material world but he will be in the marginal where koilas dham is there where inner current devotional practice and external current sense enjoyment is still there in the heart do you know when the annihilation finish of the, there is a four types of annihilation the last annihilation no not the last one third one not the fourth one La, uh, for a third annihilation means when the whole creation is finished then the whole material uh, elements with the soul everything goes from uh, shiva linga to the garbhadakshay vishnu to the mahavishnu's body when the new creation start guess what happen all the desire the soul has it's still there everything else disappear those desires bring them back and start again material enjoyment so when we talk about liberation we're talking about liberation from material desire material karma material gano idea misconception of gano idea material conception of yoga siddhi yoga siddhi is born from a cheating propensity and there is a big story one day we can explain but it is coming from a cheating mentality to beat the system without enjoy without working hard for it those who are paying for it they are called karmi and those who are uh, rejecting it they are called gyan and those who want to cheat the system i always still want to enjoy <coughs> like just like uh, some of the prajapati they can enjoy they can create a body they can enjoy and destroy that body of that soul immediately the mystic they also enjoy is not that they don't enjoy but they don't want to pay for it they just accumulate it and then they kind of go around it in sneaky tricky way but those are the real problem those desire has to be completely gone this is the real liberation what is the real liberation when somebody feel enthusiastic to serve the lord this is a shorter version but we can explain for so much about it and they are categorized so many way and maybe next week this this gradation because each gradation if we understand what is that means there's the three types of merging and uh, what each merging does how, where they go what they experience do they ever come back from there all this thing has to be discussed so i'm sure you will hear more because then i think maybe 12 to 15 pages actually is all talking about this
Dr. Prabhu, thank you so much for the elaborate answer and I'm looking forward to the future session um, so that I can understand better. Um, anybody else has questions? Hi. 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 Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yes, I yes, Prabhuji. Uh, thank you so much. And then also we are looking forward to more that uh, uh, you explain about the uh, poor kind of alienation. Uh, also, I'm thinking, Prabhu, um, you were telling, I uh, mean, so we actually, uh, devotional service is not only the free from the material desire, but to please Krishna. Ultimately, it uh, happens when he please. I was thinking uh, in our life, uh, uh, how we can uh, make sure uh, our activities is pleasing to Krishna. Uh, mm. And we are trying to do the devotional service. There is a two-way to... Oh, by the way, is this Mother Anjana Gopika? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Okay. I think first time we I uh, we discuss you asked a question where it says that Hare Krishna Mahamantra is reversed by Lord Chaitanya. No, Actually, no, I, you, you remember? Uh, yeah, somebody asked. Uh, uh, oh, okay, I found the answer. Uh, Actually, uh, did you last me that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in Kali Santaran Upanishad. Kali Santaran Upanishad originally is actually reversed. But you don't see in a modern translation. But it is actually originally is Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Okay. The ancient okay. scriptures. And then the yeah. new, new version has Mahaprabhu because he's a Supreme Lord. So he intervened and he changed to Hare Krishna first. But originally it was Hare Rama. Uh, but Prabhu, uh, my question was also like, you know, to follow up on that. There are also other scriptures that talk about the Mahamantra. And we mm -hmm. do see, uh, you know, the order of Hare Krishna being there in the, in the front. Uh, so, but uh, I was more trying to see if at all there is any reference where Mahaprabhu purposely changed it. So, yeah. It is Mahaprabhu, because um, that Maharaj who was mentioning, he said that mm -hmm. actually when Jiva Goswami Path came and mm -hmm. uh, he researched everything mm -hmm. and uh, he found that actually Mahaprabhu's extreme mercy that uh, he made uh, anybody to chant because the uh, Upanishad mantra, no good, unless you are Brahman born, you are not supposed to utter the mantra. Mm -hmm. So to make it accessible, he, he put Krishna's name first, and then Ram's. That, that's not really Ram in a Juga Avatar wise, because that Ram also, we go here, we take Radha Raman. Um, but uh, all the Vishnu incarnation of Ram is also the same. It's not like we, we don't differentiate. So in that angle. So let's go back to that uh, question that Mataji asked. So two ways we can test. Mm. The test of our um, devotional practice is actually a taste. Whether we are advancing or we are pleasing Krishna or not, that test is actually a taste. The test is tested by the taste within you. This is a um, two way to look at from that sloka. Siddhir bhavati ba naiti sangsaya achyata sevinam. Sangsaya. Doubt will come whether I am pleasing Krishna, am I succeed, succeeding in spiritual progress. This doubt will come in the mind. Siddhir Bhavati Bhaneti Sangsaya Achyuta Sevinam Nishangsaya Stuta Bhakta Puricharja Ratatmana. So, this sloka you will also find in Gorya Kantahar. Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur used to use that sloka many times. That, uh, yes, the doubt will come. But if we have a good 
relationship with our shiksha guru, our well-wisher devotees. By their pleasure, by their happiness of seeing my service, it's a one way to look at. Another one, do you feel happy when you're serving? Do you feel, this is not somebody you will see from outside. Am I, I ask myself, am I happy to serve the Holy Name today? This, right after Mangalarti, we sit down and chant for two hours. Am I happy to serve? I don't, I don't remember previous, but now, I, to be honest, yes, I do. It's not a pride or anything. It's just, yes, I do. I do want to serve. I love chanting. Okay, good. Then that sloka says, then yes, Krishna is happy. Krishna is accepting our sincere endeavor. So two way. Will you remember that? Yes, Prabhu, yes. One is Shiksha Guru is uh, pleasing who is guiding us and another is so we have a still taste to hearing, chanting to the devotional service more and more. Yes. Testing machine is within you. Where is the testing machine of progressing? Within you. If you feel happy to give more to Krishna, to your time, your energy, your offerings. If you feel happy, yes, this is another way of from that sloka that Krishna is pleased. So we end here or there's more discussion? Um, Hi Krishna. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. I I I have a question but I also need to follow up on on this answer that you gave. So I'm wondering if um if a person enjoys hearing, you know, Krishna Kata um because you said that, you know, you know, do you feel happy serving? So if you if your happiness is hearing Krishna Kata, how do you know if if that happiness is on the soul level or on just like an intellectual level only? Mm. Very good, very good. You are very thoughtful, Mataji. If you look at that verse. One ten dot one dot four. Nipriti tarse upogiyamana. Prabhupad loved that verse. Nipriti tarse upogiyamana. Bhava also this suta mano viram. I'm not going to explain the whole uh, sloka, but it's very sweet sloka. That uh, if you feel to serve more and you desire. Uh, not to serve uh, is fading away. That sloka says, "Yes, you are progressing. It is pleasing Krishna. Progressing, progressing, progression in spiritual life means uh, pleasing Krishna, and that is not um, uh, any other level but constitutional level." Now, until pure greed develops, Rupa Goswami Pad in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, another sloka he gives, Bhakti Samadhuja Suti Dhira Apekshate Naitam Natra Shastram Najukti Tad Lobha Utpati Lakshanam. Until Lobha or the incessant desire, greed, to please the Lord, until that uh, greed or uh, desire, strong desire arise in the heart, we do engage our intelligence to focus what is proper, what is not proper. We should. Intelligence will not give us Krishna. But intelligence will allow us, intelligence will guide us, intelligence will help us to focus on Bhakti, on Krishna. And intelligence mm-hmm. will actually take us to Bhakti. 
Mm-hmm. Intelligence mm-hmm. will protect us from the speculation, mental speculation. Intelligence will guide us to have a philosophical speculation. Intelligence will protect us from uh, concoction. So intelligence is definitely a big factor. But the experience is not the job of intelligence. But intelligence is required. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because when you come to experience on constitutional serving uh, then heart does not talk to the mind. Heart is connected with intelligence, and intelligence is connected with the mind. If you look at the verse of hierarchy that Krishna explained in third chapter, and Indriyani parani ahur indriyabha paramano manastu para buddhi buddhistu para tatsha. So there is a hierarchy in the material world that the sense object above is senses, above is mind, above is intelligence, above is soul. So in that category that we see the heart is with the soul, we are not talking about material pumping heart only, <laughs> we are talking about the soul heart. And the soul heart actually experiencing this. At that time, intelligence is in between the mind and the heart. And intelligence will have a dialogue to both sides. It is only intelligence can do this. Mind cannot do between the heart and the intelligence. So mind will, at that time, intelligence, mind will say, give a pro- opposition. Say, no, no, I know you're serving, but right now you need to go watch the movie. You need to go back home, rest. You work too hard. Mind will remind all kinds of stuff. Okay, that sannyasi is visiting or that nice uh, Tevodi Mataji uh, came to temple. You don't need to hear. You heard it enough last month. Now time to relax and enjoy. Mind will give all this proposition. Why? Because mind was trained by the soul to look for enjoyment. It is not really fault of mind either. So mind will give all this proposition. But intelligence will come. He said, no. I, we don't need to shut down your factory, karma factory. Why? Because the soul is connected with the heart. Now the heart is saturated with Krishna, and now the soul is experiencing. We don't need. Intelligence can literally protect the soul from the mind at that time. And it is necessary. Did you ever experience, Mata? Like, uh, I'm sure you did probably. <laughs> that, I mean, uh, the, you come to a point, you chant and chant and chant for so long, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I feel happy. What am I supposed to do? What's supposed to happen? Is something supposed to happen? Actually, at that time, <laughs> it's very funny. One sloka purport by Vishwan Chakuti Thakur says that Mayadev is sitting on the one side, sorry, standing on one side, and Krishna is standing on the other side of the devotee. Why? Because devotee has a free will, free choice. Okay, I chanted. What? supposed to do? Well, it's not up to Krishna or Maya. It's up to me. This choice is there. Okay, I want to serve Krishna. Krishna says, okay, here is the list. I want, come, we'll have fun. And if you say, well, I don't know. Okay, I chanted now, what should I do? Maybe I should enjoy a little bit. Maya says, I knew. I have all this list. You really liked it. I will tell you, you should come to Disney. I mean, I'm throwing some examples. Like you come to do this or eat the ice cream or something. Maya will create some, because she knows, she knows what each soul really attracted for so many lifetimes. But the choice is up to us. I have experience of Krishna consciousness. Also, there is a fear if I don't hook with this, I may fall it. I also have experience of sense enjoyment. But the choice I have to make. Maya will never come to you if you don't invite. And Krishna will not look at you if you don't invite. He is waiting, but he wants you to come. Because, you remember the example we, I think I discussed one time in this class. The Prabhupada says in a morning walk when Ridhananda Maharaj was asking that if there was no free will, then all the problem would be solved. 
Prabhupada says, you cannot put a gun on the forehead of a girl and say, you love me or I'll kill you. Because the love and the free will are together. And the gun and the love doesn't have any connection. It makes sense. So that's where the intelligence lies. That it will protect us from the mind. But intelligence also will dissolve. At one point, when your greed develops strong, then intelligence also dissolves. And the way to the way to then strengthen the intelligence, because you know, ideally, the intelligence protects the heart from the crummy mind. But yes, if if yes. if your less ideal situation, if you know, if your intelligence is there but very weak, you know. Mm. how to strengthen. You know, you always hear association of devotees, but I don't know, somehow it can always see, it can also seem that we hear so much and still the intelligence is weak. Yeah. Mataji, from the practical point, I can tell you, in my own experience life, and I'm, I was talking to different, even in Raduna Maharaj, I was talking about one time. It is coming actually from the practice. Because willpower, if we don't have a strong willpower, which comes from the practice only, mm. the willpower has a two function, persistence and abstinence. Where and where am I going to get this? strong intelligence. Willpower is a function of the intelligence, actually. The intelligence means, you know, when knowledge is applied, it's intelligent. And the intelligence, when it is active, there's the willpower from within, coming, guiding. Yes, I'm going to chant. I'm a little tired. That's all right. But you will always make me tired. I'm going to chant. So where is willpower coming? It is intelligent, in a sense. The willpower coming from the more we practice, more we will get stronger. And intelligence from within. Right. Now, when it becomes a mature stage, the super soul Krishna himself manifests as uh, intelligence. It's not intelligence, it's not separate entity anymore. It is Krishna, super soul. Prabhupada writes in one place that intelligence is super soul. In Bhagavad Gita, you will find in 10 chapter <coughs> where it says, Dadami Bhutti Jogam Tam. I will give the intelligence. That intelligence is not like Krishna is giving, it is Krishna Himself presence in that intelligence. Okay, so you said willpower is a combination of persistence and abstinence. Two functions of the willpower. Yes. You know, the, the, I, the, the distance of the willpower, or free will, you can say, the distance is between impulse and response. Mm -hmm. yes. Response comes from the soul with intelligence. But impulse is the mind. And every day, everybody is... They are not thinking like this, the way we are discussing, but every day everybody is falling for this impulse. They are doing whatever their mind is dictating. So the functions of willpower, persistence and abstinence, or I can say when you are employing your willpower, yes. you are either you're persisting and you are abstaining, but in intelligence, you say, is when we apply the theoretical knowledge that we acquire. Is it, is it? When you apply, yes. And the way you get the willpower is more we chant, more we hear about Krishna, 
our willpower becomes strong, stronger, stronger, stronger. Because we're attracted uh, by the by the attraction for Krishna increases our willpower. Yes, yes, and actually Krishna from within will guide to that. Krishna actually become very happy when we are coming towards him. He actually wants more, but he doesn't want to force. Hmm. And sometimes in the, in the new fight stage, it appears like Krishna doesn't respond to our prayers. He is responding. But the way he responds, that he sees, I think I mentioned in this class also one time, that he sees, there is a famous verse in Bhagavad Gita, Vedaham samatitani bartamanani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani mantu vedana kaschan. Krishna sees our future and he planning at present <laughs> but we I cannot see my future <laughs> but I'm planning the future from the present I see my present so it, 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 it most of the time it will not match in the early stage of spiritual life because Krishna is the most lovable person. He always care more than we even think. So he is planning our future. He sees our future. And he plans our present on the basis of what he sees in the future what will happen. You know in one sense, Mata, that our future Bishan Chakruti Thakur writes in Mata Chakadamini, what we are going to be such a happy it's already done. Krishna already done that. It's individually us how desperate we want to experience. It's up to us. That's why the free will has a big game. But when you say he sees our future, right? And and based yes. on that based on that he's planning our present. Yes. That that um yeah, I feel like I need some clarification on the nature of that future that he's seeing because the way you put it, it, it kind of makes it sound like our future is not so open-ended as if to say practically our, our free, the, the, the way we employ our free will in the present it's like it almost doesn't matter because he already sees what our future is going to be. But I'm sure that can't be true. So when you say he sees our future, how do I understand that in a way that doesn't make it sound as if... In the, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a verse. Krishna says, Vedaham, I know the future and the past and the present. I believe 724, I believe. In Bhagavad Gita, you can see, Krishna says, I know the past, present, future. But nobody knows mine. If you really deeply think about that verse and the commentary of the Acharyas, Prabhupada, that Krishna knows our future doesn't mean it is not open-end. Krishna knows the future, that he is endeavoring, he's going to come to that point, that he will be completely free of maya, and he will be start something. As for our loving sentiment, that will be experienced as the moment goes. That part, nobody knows until it appears. Otherwise, there would not be any mystery about it. Krishna knows our future, what will happen. Like for an example, mm -hmm. for an example, you know... If, if I, if, if you are my mother and I'm, I am drinking poison, you know I'll be dead. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I'm drinking milk or some nice organic nutrition prasadam, that I will have a good health. So similarly, every soul's future Krishna knows. And he's trying always to guide. And he's, he's planning by seeing, knowing the, his, their future, in, in that sense, is planning. So sometimes when the body pray for something, we don't respond. I give you an example. For an example, there's the one devotee, and 
was going through a very tough time. And then another devotee created a rumor. I won't say the name because they are also live in America. And rumors against that person. And it became so much annoying, the temple authority had to get involved. And it was like a very miserable. And one devotee suggested to talk to me. So then I came to the picture and then we went through like, few days talking once in a while, like a, maybe twice, three times a day, talking, talking, talking about this, that, this, that. And that devotee could not see any bright, anything good will come out. He felt like he got stuck, even though he was chanting, he, was, he practiced 22 years. He was, he felt like there is no way anything will good come. And, and Krishna doesn't respond. He's praying every day. I said, Krishna is responding. When time comes, you will regret that you thinking, you blaming Krishna. He said, but that's in your case. But Prabhu, this is not true. I'm going through such a nightmare. And now it's about fifth year now. Last year, he was shocked that actually what he went through, he became so strong now in spiritual life. And he doesn't know why he could not see that. So then I was talking to him actually last week. I said, but you blamed. You blamed the temple authority. You blamed so many devotees. You blamed that person also. And you really accused that other devotee. And what are you going to do? He said, I really want to apologize. I said, that's not enough. You have to do some service to please them. But you see that you, Krishna had to... Did Krishna respond? He agreed. But he said, my problem is why I could not see. I said, you didn't want to see. Because you, you, you are so much obsessed. You heard that story. Did I mention that story of a mundane karmi? That uh, one man, he was uh, suffering for a job interview and finally he got a job interview uh, but on the way he was going there's a big bridge and he got a flat tire and did I tell that story before I don't know I don't recognize it so okay far. okay so uh, so if you just focus just for one moment that it's a true story happened so then uh, he Finally, crossed the bridge and then he said, that's it, I can't go. Uh, otherwise, the tire will be completely finished. So he found the tools in the back uh, to take out the flat tire. And now what happened, the bridge is so deep and current uh, uh, water, heavy current, that he put those bowls that he took out the flat tire and some or other, there was a piece of wood that he put it on and he sat on it and they jumped and fell on the water. And there's no mm. way he can ever <laughs> take it back. So he went down all the way and he saw there's no trace. And he has to go underneath the water and he has no idea. It's current, heavy current. And he was so depressed and there's no AAA. Yeah, because it didn't happen here. It happened in Europe. They didn't, have, they didn't have that service. Some other, that part of the Belarus, the country. And he was struggling so much. And there was a little farmer was nearby. And he thought, uh, the farmer asked him, do you need some help? And he saw this farmer doesn't have anything. No truck, nothing, no car, just like an like a old village farmer. He thought, what he can help? I need a mechanics. I need a <laughs> somebody who, where I can find a bolt. So he says, no, it's okay, but he doesn't have any other way. But then the farmer extended his compassion. He came nearby. He says, but what's the problem? And he doesn't speak the in, uh, language of uh, Belarus language. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so he's shown him, but he knows that he's not... Then he told him, he said, I can help you. So he, what he did, he took, he made three bolts in each tire and took 
three bolts from other three and put three bolts on the new tire. Mm-hmm. And this, this genius, computer genius, he thought, why couldn't I, I think that? Mm-hmm. Why this man, villager, who is not a technician, computer genius like me, but he figured it out, this solution, so easily. Why I'm so genius, but I'm useless. <laughs> and I was so depressed, I could not. So then, of course, he eventually met a devotee and gave a Bhagavad Gita, and he came to temple, and he told to this friend of mine who told me that. And so my point is that actually it is so true that we are so focused so much on the material suffering that we don't even see that the Krishna's hand is there. And the devotee agreed. After five years, he agreed that Krishna's hand was all along. And he's, now he feels so happy in spiritual path and his material problem also dissolves in a sense that he was going through so struggle of uh, bankruptcy, any other list goes on and on. But he says he could not see, he could not see any light because he was focused on the problem. So did he end up seeing how that problem ended up being somehow instrumental in... Yes. <clears throat> he is eternally thankful. And he's, he, he actually was crying over the phone. He said, I'm so thankful to all those devotees, but they tolerated me. I said, that's not enough. You have to do something to make them feel good now. He said, I am. I'm going to do, I'm going to make a big feast. I'm going to sponsor. I'm going to, I said, do all is kind in any circumstances. You be kind to others. Because Krishna's hand is always, he wants us to, he, who is Krishna going to use? Tell me. Who is Krishna going to use purifying this world? Us, the devotees. We should always think Krishna is using us. Just like Prabhupada told to Giriraj Maharaj. Krishna is testing him. Krishna is using him. So, Krishna but is going to use. The mercy that that devotee ended up experiencing, he experienced it. The, the, he went through the, that, that terrible, miserable struggle, but the 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 mercy that he experienced was in the form he saw how the materials misery ended up benefiting him in a spiritual way. Was that what he saw he experienced? Spiritually also materially relinquish all this problem. Mm-hmm. But there is a time he has to pass it. Mm-hmm. Now there is a two things we concluded. I said one thing he did not do that when suffering comes in our life or challenges come, if we generally we don't take shelter, we do take shelter of Krishna for a while and then it does not fix the problem, then we kind of slacking. You know the word slacking, like uh, less yeah. and less depend on Krishna. And mm-hmm. that's what he did and eventually he almost gave up chanting or doing anything. And then when he saw that actually the court decided that actually was not even um, his fault and everything is fine. And then he said, oh my God. And he, he felt like Krishna was helping him, but he did not trust him. But he could have actually come closer to Krishna at that, like right now, like last week when he talked, I said, can you go and pray to Krishna deeply like those days you could? He said, no. I don't have that feeling of pressure that I am struggling. And I try. And I apologize to Krishna. But so my point is, when challenges come, we should take advantage. Hey, this is the moment I am going to create the future that I want. But when we have a good time, it's difficult to bring that intent, you know. Mm-hmm. It is very difficult. During good time, nobody even pray to God much. Oh, good time is okay. Yeah, I like to chant. It's just okay. No extra rounds because I, you know, I'm okay. Everything is good. I'm healthy. Enough money. Everything is good. Mm-hmm. But so when, does not mm-hmm. 
Prabhupada says, there's a whole song Prabhupada sings. Sukha samay hari baje, suk, uh, no, dukha samay hari baje, dukh kahan hoi. Or sukha samay hari baje, dukh kahan hoi. If somebody really take advantage of Krishna consciousness during happiness, then there is no chance of suffering coming. And if suffering comes, we should take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Of course, that requires some association, good association and inspiration. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to be rude, but sometime, you know, when some devotees go through like tremendous suffering, uh, our mind dictates us to stay away. We don't want to be part of loser. We think, but that's not good. Yeah. So I wonder if I if I could put what you said in another way, if you would agree. Um, you said that you know Krishna plans are are present based on the future that he sees. So another way that you can say that is um, Krishna plans are present for our for our the elevation of our consciousness. Is that yes, the yes. same thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And when you get the gift you really start appreciating. But then you feel guilty also. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Even in my life, I accuse Krishna. Yeah. And I still feel guilty about it. But what can I do? Mm-hmm. I was such a rotten condition. Okay, so we can um, help all the devotees. Yeah, um, just one last question is very quick, I'm sure. Um, before the Q&A session began, I wonder if you remember saying that, um, you know, there, you... you I, you remember making a distinction between service and and pleasing Krishna? Say it again. I, I could not understand. Pleasing? What? Do, yeah, do you remember earlier in your lecture when you were making a distinction between just serving Krishna and pleasing Krishna? Uh, there is a distinction. Actually, Prabhupada made the distinction in Miami, uh, where Vishal Prabhu was standing, and he was like surprised. He said, Prabhupada says in one point, he says, we are not interested of just pleasing Krishna. We are interested what pleases Krishna. So if somebody has a desire to serve Krishna, that's good. But better than that, if the desire promotes that, okay, what will please Krishna is, let's find out that. Then it's much higher, much better. Can you elaborate on the, the distinction? Distinction is like, if you... If you are hungry, you want to eat food. Mm. But the food is good. But the place you are sitting is not clean. And the people who are serving, it's not also very well dressed and clean looking. Mm -hmm. They're sweating and they're Mm. wiping their forehead, also the same hand they're serving. Mm, I don't know. I feel a little bit like, uh, God, the food is so good, but uh, <laughs> you know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So similarly, what pleases Krishna, it's actually if we meditate and contemplate on that more, then we are going to serve anyway. Then our profit, because please, in a mundane sense, I'm just giving. The profit will be multiple. Instead of just, just like a job, okay, just chant, okay, I have to do 16 hours, 2 hours, I guess, okay, let me finish it. But that's not really a good way to set up the mind. It is a joyful performance. And Krishna will be happy. I was so far away from my real position. Krishna is so kind that he has come in a form of chanting. Oh Lord, please help me to approach you. Please help me to really allow, allow me to serve you. This humble attitude 
and then uh, that you said that kirtaniya sadahari that if i chant it pleases you that's why you send your own person own friend who has come as my guru and you are so kind thank you so much so i'm trying to sir please automatically we are in a position that pleasing krishna and you will experience a mystic feeling instead well i'm chanting hari krishna i don't know just so oh, one more round then okay you are doing the same service but why not take the advantage of it everything in a clear clean nice pure everything motive is intention everything is good then it taste will be very good otherwise you still get the result but the offerer the person who is serving the lord is not clean he has a like a okay i need to chant i guess i'm going to chant why not be clear mind what i'm doing it mm-hmm. is the joyful performance so the example that i gave if the person who is serving you if he is like a well dressed clean you know you see the clean hand clean face not sweating not like tired exhausted you really don't feel pressure to give rather smiling and say oh i'm so happy to give you this please take some more then you feel to eat also more mm-hmm. so yeah when one is, when we uh, when we are offering if we offer it with a happy mood happy appreciated attitude krishna also will taste nicely mm-hmm. yeah so, something like that yeah is 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 one is done just mechanically and the other is done with mood right very good Conscious. very good yes yeah very good thank you okay Martin. thank you so very much you wonderful wonderful explanations appreciate it thank you hi hi krishna prabhu hi krishna prabhu namaskara mandare shanta प्रभु यू फिनी Oh I didn't even go more than one I'm sorry I got stuck with one so like a stop oh, that's 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 no problem sir it was very nice thank you very much prabhu ji thank you thank you prabhu ji it's fine prabhu just you can give a nice explanation one was is also fine for us thank you so much again prabhu for thank giving you. your attention hari krishna mancha kalpa